Hi everyone. Today we would be studying about electric charges and electric field. So firstly we'll concentrate on electric charges, then we'll move on to electric field. Now the first question is what is an electric charge? That's the basic question that we have. So electric charge. So electric charge is a physical property of a body just like mass due to which it experiences a force in an electromagnetic field. So let's say if I have a body, let's say if this is a body, if this has a charge, if I keep this in an electromagnetic field due to its property of charge, it will experience a force in electromagnetic field. What is an electromagnetic field? It's a combination of electric and magnetic field. So just like mass, mass is a property. So if I have a body which has mass and if I keep it in a gravitational field, it will experience a force. In the same way, charge is a property, a physical property. If I keep a body in an electromagnetic field, it will experience a force. All right. Now, the question is where did this concept of electric charge come from? How did we get here to this position? where I just go on and switch on a plug, I see light instantaneously within seconds. How did I get here? So this is a story that goes 3000 years before. So before 3000 years ago, there was a man named Thales. So Thales was a Greek mathematician in, city of, in a Greek city called Miletus. So he was famously known as Thales of Miletus. Miletus was a Greek, ancient Greek city. So what he did was, it was in around 600 BC. So when was 600 BC? 600 BC was, right now it's 2020. So 0, 600. So around 2800 years ago. So what he did was, he found a cat. Okay, he found a cat. He took the cat. And he found amber, he rubbed amber on cat and what he saw was this amber got magical properties. So this amber could attract dry leaves. So he, he took this amber and he placed it over dry leaves and it attracted that. This amber could attract also many light objects like fur. So this amber got magical properties. What is an amber? So let me explain that as well. So amber is fossilized tree resin. What's a tree resin? So uh, just you might have seen like around many tree trunks, you'll see some liquid material. So that is a tree resin. So when after many years, for many thousand years, if, if that tree resin is kept under rocks or like under earth, it fossilized, it fossilizes and it becomes amber. So just go online and search for amber and go to images, you'll see amber. It's honey like yellow color so that's what amber is so that's what Thales of Miletus does so this was the first time in the history that when people recorded this magical property on rubbing uh, many objects got magical properties so amber was the first object that was recorded so around 1600s in Queen Elizabeth I uh, in her palace there were many magicians they used to do tricks what were the tricks they used to do so they used to take a glass rod, they used to rub it on silk cloth and they used to put this glass rod over fur. So this glass rod attracted fur and many light objects. So this was a magic that was going on around Queen Elizabeth one's time. So right now this might seem normal to us, but at that time that was a magic show that was going on. So this thing, I, I want to show you the trick that, that they used to do. So this is similar trick, not exactly the same one. So I'll show you the trick. Now this is what the magic trick that people used, magicians used to perform in Queen Elizabeth's one court. So this is what they used to do. So this is the trick that they used to perform. So these uh, are what I have are aluminum foils. These are cut into small pieces. Now what I have here is a cotton cloth and this is PVC. Now let's see the magic that the magicians used to perform. Okay, now I'll sprinkle these small aluminum foils here. Okay, now let's 
see what was the magic trick that they used to perform. So they used to do something like this. They did not have had exactly the same materials with them, but this was the idea that they used to something they used to do. Now look at the magic. You see this? Without touching, without even touching. This is the magic that they used to perform. We'll explain this a bit later, how this actually happens. So this was one of the magic that people used to perform. And this used to awe the audience. They used to be mesmerized with this. All right then. All right. So you saw this trick right now? So right now, this might seem normal to you, right? Just a PVC pipe rubbed and it attracts aluminum foil. This might seem normal to you. But remember, at that time, they did not know what charges, what electric field is, electric forces. So at that time, it was sheer magic that was going on. So around the same time, and before, before moving on, let me give you a fun fact. So the term electrician, it came from the people who were interested in magic and they were interested in electricity. So magicians who were interested in electricity, they were known as electricians. Got that? So you find some electrician near your house, let them know this. All right, so around 1600, a man named William Gilbert, William Gilbert is the same man who uh, discovered Earth's magnetism, so he gave Earth, Earth's magnetism. So William Gilbert, he coined a term which was known as electrica. Electrica, what does electrica mean? Electrica means amber-like properties. Uh, it has something that has amber-like attracting properties. So where did he find electrica from? So the Greek name for amber is electron. Greek name for amber is electron. So it's E-L-E-K-T-R-O-N, not the C, but K-T-R-O-N. So the Greek name for electron was this, for amber was this. So from this, William Gilbert got electrica, all right? And around 1646, there was a guy named Thomas Brown. So he coined electricity electricity in 1646 so this was the first time the term electricity came into existence all right so re remember this this is a fun fact you should know about this all right so what happened was so now scientists began doing experiments they knew something about this something called uh, the, the like rubbing it gives properties like attraction and all that but they now started doing serious experiment. So in 1729, there was a guy named Stephen Gray. Sorry, G R A Y. That's the guy. So he lived uh, 1667 till 1736. So Stephen Gray did experiment that dazzled the audience. He did some exper experiment that was famous experiment at that time. That was a well-known experiment. So in 1729, he did a, an experiment which was known as flying boy experiment. So I'll show you what the experiment that he did. So he, what he did was he suspended a boy. Through threads, these were silk threads. So he suspended the boy, and then, so the boy is is, is being suspended like this, all right. So his his legs are in air, and his hands are in front, and these are silk threads. Remember this? These are silk threads, silk ropes, you can say. Now what he did was, in front of the boy's hand, uh, down, he kept gold foils and also like feathers so he kept that now what Stephen Gray did was he charged the boy using Hawksby machine Hawksby machine I'll write the name for you 
हॉक्सपी हॉक्सपीज मशीन हॉक्सपीज मशीन सो दिस इज सिमिलर टू द वैंडी ग्राफ जनरेटर दिस सिमिलर टू दैट बट दिस इज अर्लियर वर्जन सो दिस इज हाउ पीपल यूज टू जनरेट चार्ज all right so he charged the boy using hawksby's machine now what people saw was so this he was performing a show a magic magical show so he was performing a show so he charged the boy what people saw was after the boy became charged so the boy was suspended in the air like this so the the gold foils that were kept on ground the boy started attracting those gold foils and feathers you see just this like imagine how bamboozled people might have been they might their minds might have been blown up like someone attracting gold leaves just just like very far their their hands are very far away and they are attracting the gold leaves so this was an experiment that gave the initial thing like what electricity is what electric charges are so this was the initial beginning in a more scientific manner so before they were doing a uh, magic show and things so right now steven gray was the one who was responsible for the initial seeds for electricity and um, electrical charges he also introduced what we call conductors and insulators so he gave a bit theory about conductors and insulators so he was the one who started conductors and insulators all right so around the same time when stephen gray was there there was a man a french chemist called charles dufay he was a french chemist so he was charles dufay charles dufay that was the name so charles dufay so 1698 to 1739 1698 to 1739 so what charles dufay was doing was he was taking objects so he had studied many people before him so what he was doing was he was trying to find if he can find many uh, other combination where he can rub objects and that rubbed object it got electrical properties like magical attracting prop attracting properties so he was trying to find that mr charles dufay so along the same time there were many scientists they were doing experiments all right so they were doing experiments like rubbing things and seeing what all the objects that become charged on rubbing so this was the major one i want you to remember this glass rod glass rod and silk this is first pair and the other one is plastic rod and so this is plastic rod and cat's fur so these were the two combinations that i want you to remember so what happened was now this was the experiment that people did so they took two balls so these were pith balls so right now we can uh, so these are similar to thermocol balls or polystyrene balls so these were the two balls that they took now what they did was they took this pair glass rod and silk so they rubbed glass rod with silk heavily so when they rubbed glass rod with silk and this glass rod they touched it with this ball so these were the two balls these are just suspended normally suspended so now what happened was when this ball was touched with glass rod and the same ball was touched with glass rod so these two balls they starting started rippling each other all right so this was one thing and the same thing they did with plastic rod so they took plastic rod and they touched the ball with it so these two balls they started rippling each other so this was a phenomena one phenomena so due to which due to this phenomena charles dufay concluded that same charges same charges they ripple each other all right so the glass rod so when same glass rod was touched here same glass rod would touch here and here 
So this, these are same charges. So same charges repel each other. This was the first time that someone said there are two types of charges. One is same and the other one are different charges. So first is same charges repel each other. And when he took this plastic rod on one ball and on another ball he took glass rod. So these are two different charges because they attracted each other. These two balls, they attracted each other. So that's how he concluded that there are two kinds of charges. So there were two conclusions that were made. One, there are two kinds of charges and they, same charges, they will repel each other and different charges, they will attract each other. So that was the first time that Charles Ruffet was responsible for introducing two kinds of charges. But remember, he did not introduce positive and negative charge. He just said that there are two different kinds of electricity and same type of electricity, they repel each other and different they attract each other unlike attracts and same ripples now came in benjamin franklin benjamin franklin was an american polymath what is polymath person who is interested and who has who has done great things in more than one subject so they are interested in more than one subject so right now what we have is chemist physicist so before people used to be polymath they used to be interested in physics chemistry and many others so same was benjamin franklin benjamin franklin was a diplomat but he was also a scientist so he did many things along the way so benjamin franklin came along benjamin franklin so benjamin franklin was 1706 till 1790 so what franklin was doing was he was studying these interesting phenomena lightning light and jar so he was going uh, through these phenomena he was just trying to answer what all these phenomena are because at that time scientists were trying to explain all these phenomena so at that time benjamin franklin introduced a concept by the name of electric fluid so electric fluid electric fluid so franklin introduced the idea of electric fluid and with this came the idea of positive and negative charge all right remember this this is an interesting step and an important step in our history of charges so what he said what did benjamin franklin say franklin said there's something by the name of electric fluid that is naturally around it's an invisible fluid that is naturally around all the bodies that is there but what happens is if this electric fluid is in excess on any body that body we say positive charge and if that electric fluid is in deficit on any body that body we call it as negatively charged body all right understand this so he was the first person to introduce the concept of electric fluid. So let's say if, if a body is there, A, if it, has, if it is having excess of electric fluid, we'll call it as positive charge. And if the body B is there, if it is having deficit, deficit of this electric fluid, we'll call it as negative charge. Now the question is, why did he name it positive and negative? Because he wanted something opposite, positive, negative so they should cancel each other that's how we call a body neutral body so in order to explain neutral body so positive and negative they cancel to give zero so he wanted something like that he could have named it up down north south but he chose positive and negative because he wanted to show the cancellation of charges so that's why something that is excess is positive something that is less is known as this electric fluid is known as a negative body all right now what he said was he gave the example of glass glass rod so this is glass rod glass rod and the other one is silk cloth silk so what he said was so when glass rod is rubbed with silk so that's how he tried explaining the charges so he said when glass rod is rubbed with silk this glass rod loses so this glass rod has excess of the electric fluid the electric fluid that is there so this glass rod has excess of electric fluid 
So that's why this glass rod becomes positively charged. Remember, excess of electric fluid. Silk, the silk cloth has lesser deficit of electric fluid. So that's why silk becomes negatively charged. All right. Now, one more thing. This was convention. He chose it. He chose it arbitrarily. All right. So it was all done arbitrarily. But the thing is, you have to remember, he could have given this positive or negative, but he gave it because it was in. He he had to give something to someone. So it's just like like the axis that we have. We choose the above one positive, lower one negative. The Cartesian plane that we have. So in the same way x y axis so in the same way he, he chose this convention so this is all convention that he used now what happened was this was all before 150 years before electron was actually discovered remember this was 150 years so this was all done in 1746 all right so this was 150 years before electron was discovered. So he, Benjamin Franklin, had no idea whatsoever of what an electron is. Now what happened, when people discovered electron, they needed to give it a charge. So after discovering electron, people did the same experiment of rubbing glass rod with silk. Now what they saw was, when they rubbed glass rod with silk, this glass rod silk the silk gained extra electrons all right so this silk gained extra electrons now what franklin had done was silk he had given negative charge and glass was positive charge so in order to what benjamin what benjamin franklin had said in order to prove it right in order to support his argument what they said was electron has to have negative charge all right because silk cloth it gains electron and it becomes negative hence electron has to have a negative charge all right and glass rod it lost electron so that's why glass rod has to have positive charge positive charge so that that's the reason how electron came into having a negative charge all right so this is how the history goes so that's why we call electron negative charge. The reason being, when scientists discovered electron, they did experiment again, glass rod and silk. They saw that silk, it gained electrons. All right. Now, in order to what, support what Benjamin Franklin had said, because they had been a convention, all right. So you can't change convention altogether because you have many science books based on that, many laws based on that. So this convention is all right. There's no problem with that. All right. Now, in order to explain why silk gained negative charge, because they said silk gained electrons, so electrons have to have a negative charge. So that's how you can explain why silk was a negative charge. All right. So this everything gave rise to what Benjamin Franklin uh, gave uh, the the convention electricity we have a convention direction of electricity that's the reason due to benjamin franklin all right he was the one that is that was responsible we'll talk more about it in the chapter of electricity but now for now remember this benjamin franklin was the one responsible for the conventional electricity direction the convention direction of electricity and the other thing was he was responsible for conservation of electric charge all right we'll study about this later on in the coming part but right now remember this he was responsible for conventional electricity and uh, conservation of electric charge all right then